वेलकम थैंक्स फॉर ट्यूनिंग इन आई एम मेहर झा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट संथाल बर्गनास कॉलेज दुमका इन टू डेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डू अ क्रिटिकल ओवरव्यू ऑफ डी एस लॉरेंस वेरी पॉपुलर नॉवल सन्स एंड लवर्स द नॉवल सन्स एंड लवर्स इज डिवाइडेड इंटू टू पार्ट्स द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज इज मोर लाइवली इज कंसिडर्ड टू हैव मोर किड लाइक वंडर अटैच टू इट and one of the reasons behind it is because the because the you know, because the moral family with which the novel is concerned uh, the first part deals mostly with the growing up of kids and dias lawrence manages to capture that kid like wonder in his language and the first part therefore uh, is a combination of this and this idea of wonder this idea of narration and and as well as Uh, narrating truthfully as well as narrating with conviction and all of these things come together to make the first part a very enjoyable read uh, the second part of course uh, uh, tackles the grown up issues right so the language also adapts uh, likewise but we will come to the second part later uh, <clears throat> when the novel begins we we see that uh, there are two kids in the moral family uh, there is the husband and there is the wife the full name of the husband is walter morel the full name of the wife is gertrude morel we begin the novel by uh, entering this uh, settlement called bestwood which is a mining town and the township is very much regulated and very much maintained by the company the mining company and everything uh, relating to how people wake up in their homes to when they have their lunch to when they go out and the kind of things that they do for recreation it is all decided by the workings of the company it is all decided or influenced by the lifestyle of people who are working in the company and in these mines uh, who are the workers they are the men right and so the women are often left in their homes uh, to tend to the house and to tend to the kids uh mrs morel is one of such women who stays home and she has to take care of three kids the first the elder son is called william uh the second is annie and the third uh, with whom mrs morel is pregnant at the time uh, of novel's opening is paul uh a fourth child called arthur arrives later in the first part uh we are also introduced by lawrence to the marriage uh, of mr and mrs morel that how it all happened how they fell in love with each other how they first met uh what all happened when they first met and from the journey from the first love to the marriage uh, we are shown a glimpse by dias lawrence and it is one of those very sensitive portrayal of two people in love uh just to give you a brief idea of how these two people are in their own life mr and mrs morel so mr morel's full name is walter walter morel and mrs morel's full name is gertrude morel and walter morel is a miner uh, he works in the mine and he has that earthiness attached to him he is he is the man of the earth he is he is literally the man of the earth because he has to go deep inside the earth to take the coal out and then he returns home in the evening uh when the novel begins we we are we we suddenly realize that morel is also a drinker so he comes home drunk in the evening but it was not always like that we also see that there is some sort of uh resentment on mrs morel's part towards her husband and and this was something that i would like to say that it was not always like this they were very much in love with each other when they first met and the love quietly subsided or began to subside as events unfolded one after another after one year of courtship uh, mr and mrs morel were married and when the marriage did take place and after the wedding was over uh, when mrs morel started living with mr morel in their house then she uncovered a series of lies that walter had told her for example walter had told her that the house was his own when in fact it belonged to his mother 
Uh, again, Walter had said that the rent for furniture and everything else uh, was paid already when it wasn't. Walter had also told Mrs. Morrell before marriage that he did not drink and Mrs. Morrell found out through neighbor, um, through her neighbors that uh, he did actually drink and he drank a lot, right? Uh, so suddenly Mrs. Morrell realized that her marriage with Walter was founded on a series of lies that Walter had told her. But what to do now? Now that she is pregnant with William, now that William is already there, now that Annie is already there, and now she is pregnant with Paul as well. Uh, Walter is very different from Gertrude, just like Gertrude is very different from him. Gertrude had always high aspirations. She belonged to a Puritan family where austerity was observed. Uh, there was restraints on excessive entertainment. And there was something inside of Gertrude that she wanted to go out and see the world. She wanted to talk with intelligent people. She wanted to cultivate her intellectual capacities. And she thought that perhaps uh, when she would be older, she would get to do all of these things. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Walter Morell is, is a very rooted person. He, he is not a man of high taste, so to say. He never had any intellectual aspirations. He is a man of sensuality, as, 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 as uh, many people have remarked, and he is a man of unlimited charm and he is able to charm anyone with his dancing skills, with his sweet talk, with his practical knowledge of things. He is a very nice maker of things, he is a very nice craftsman and it is through his craftsmanship that sometimes he chooses to show his love either towards his, uh, his wife or towards his children. <clears throat> As the novel progresses, we find out that the marriage between Walter and Gertrude is not going so well. Gertrude always uh, thinks uh, very negative about her husband and the husband does give her enough, uh, you know, enough evidence uh, to think negatively about him. Uh, but to say that the marriage is loveless would be a bit far-fetched. Love operates on very different levels in Sons and Lovers and among these two characters. Uh, at first, it is the love of passion. Uh, secondly, it is after the marriage, it becomes uh, more like duty and less like love. But both Walter and Gertrude keep coming back to each other. Gertrude, of course, she depends on Walter. And Walter, even after he threatens to leave the house once or twice, but he never really does it. So they both keep coming back to each other and somehow or the other, the marriage continues. Finally, Paul is born and there are three members in the family. And later, Arthur is born. Let's talk about the children first. Uh, the eldest is William and William is very close to his mother. And the mother also dotes on her eldest son. Uh, there is a very nice quality in William that because he adores his mother so much, he wants to do everything for her, even though he is only a little kid. And he wants to bring the world to her, he wants to bring whatever he wins in little races or in any sport competition or any silly competition that keeps happening among kids. And when he wins something, he brings the trophy to the mother. And Gertrude uh, takes immense pride in her son, right? Uh, the bond is very strong. William feels for the mother. The mother feels for William too. Then there is Annie. We don't get to see much of Annie, but she is there. She, she is the sister. Uh, and uh, she, she mostly keeps on either crying or mostly keeps on irritating her. Uh, siblings, right? The third in line is Paul. Uh, Paul, uh, when Paul is born, uh, Paul is an unwanted child. Mrs. Morel did not really want Paul to be born, but 
after the birth of Paul, she developed this intense fascination for him. Paul also, from, from his birth, uh, he had this very curious look in his eyes and he was susceptible to bouts of depression from the very early age, even when he was an infant. And that depression would often reflect in his eyes and so his face would become pensive, his face would become thoughtful. And this would uh, make Mrs. Morel anxious, concerned and sometimes even, uh, you know, like awestruck that uh, a, a kid of this age is able to show these many emotions on his face. Paul grows up to be less masculine than William. William is the more masculine of the brothers. Paul is on the sensitive side. Uh, William is well built. He grows up to be a very nice young man, very attractive young man. And girls all over the town desire him. Paul, on the other hand, has this silent, quiet nature. He is an artist. He likes to paint things. He likes to draw. And he likes to observe things very keenly. Right? And finally, we come to the birth of Arthur. Arthur, when Arthur is born, Arthur takes immediately to the father. He is uh, close to Mr. Morel. Uh, when he was a baby, his hands would stretch out towards father more than his hands would stretch out towards the mother. And Mrs. Morel is really happy actually that Arthur likes the father more. It is one of those things that she is thankful for, that at least the uh, father would not think that the mother had put all the children in her camp, so to say. So Gertrude is very happy that Arthur likes his father a lot. And when Mr. Morel is in a good mood, then he also tries to humor his little son often. There, there are uh, a few significant instances in uh, the first part of the novel. The first instance is uh, Mrs. Morel outside of her house when she is locked out after a fight uh, by Walter, who goes to sleep and without realizing that he had locked uh, his wife outside. Uh, Mrs. Morel, with nothing, with nothing to do, uh, enters into the garden. It is a cold night. The moon is very bright above her. And she, she tries to find peace and solace in the company of many plants and many trees and many flowers. And there comes a point when, when she is pregnant with Paul that she chooses to dip her face into this blooming, pollinating lilies. And when she emerges after uh, dipping her face into the lilies, uh, her face is filled with the pollen, the dust of the pollen on her face, right? And it was then that she realized that she must care for Paul, even if she did not want him initially. But now she must look after him because in that moment when she was locked outside of her house, she was not alone. Paul was also inside her and Paul was also not in the house. So in that moment of solitude, in that moment of pain even, they had each other. Paul in the body of Mrs. Morel and Mrs. Morel among the garden, in the garden and among the flowers. Uh, <clears throat> There are instances of shouting, there are instances of uh, violence in the novel also, but the violence, uh, if it does happen, it is not intended consciously, uh, the violence between uh, the husband and the wife. Uh, in, one, uh, in, one, uh, in one event what happens is that uh, the husband, uh, Walter Morel, uh, he accidentally throws a drawer at Mrs. Morel and that hits her head here and she ends up bleeding and of course it is it, uh, he did not mean to hit her but that incident uh, will have a major impact on their married life uh, because Gertrude is very fond of William just like William is fond of Gertrude uh, when William was a kid when William was even very young, younger than a kid, when William was very, very young, uh, he had just started sprouting golden hair on his head. And these hair would 
uh, be in the form of these very cute curls and Gertrude used to love those curls on her little boy. Uh, one day Walter comes and out of uh, out of pity, out of spite, out of uh, his own anger, uh, pity on himself, uh, he kind of takes uh, he, he kind of takes all of his frustration out on William uh, by cutting his hair off. And this irritates, this annoys and this uh, angers uh, Mrs. Morrell. And that again is one of those very, uh, very powerful scenes, uh, very powerful events uh, with consequences that the marriage will have to bear for a long, long time. By the end of the first part, we see that William has grown up to be a charming young man. Uh, he, he has worked uh, in the office where Mrs. Morrell used to go. Uh, he has later worked as a tutor and then he got a job in London where he he becomes so immersed in his work that sometimes it feels that he he would just lose himself in, in the process. Uh, one thing that uh, strikes out in the first part is the relationship or, or uh, not just not the relationship but the perception of uh, Mrs. Morrell towards uh, William's many girlfriends, uh, not girlfriends, but admirers, right? And <clears throat> and William does bring a girlfriend uh, from London, and Mrs. Morrell does not like her, and they go back. Uh, Mrs. Morrell does not approve of her either, and William returns. Uh, he is of course heartbroken that his mother does not approve of his choice. He is working really hard in London. He is working nonstop. And this takes a big toll on his health and he dies. So the first part ends with the death of William. Now the second part. When we come to the second part, we see that Paul has become the eldest son now. And Paul has also grown up. And Paul has developed a friendship, a kind of very nice friendship with this girl called Miriam. And Miriam lives in this place called Villa Farm to see first that Miriam is attracted towards Paul while Paul is unaware of Miriam's attraction towards him. Uh, Miriam and Paul become friends uh, while Miriam is still attracted to Paul and Paul is still in, in denial, in ignorance. Uh, and they both become friends. Paul teaches Miriam grammar, Latin, maths, French, Right, whatever he can and for Miriam these moments where he is teaching her are the moments of silence between them are the moments where she gets to be with him right so of course Miriam would want Paul to teach her more and more Paul on the other hand uh, sometimes would get frustrated because of Miriam's uh, you know lack of learning abilities because she has never gone to a school before and Paul is not a professionally trained teacher. So as it happens sometimes that the teachers can also get frustrated. So this is what happens with Paul too. Sometimes Paul would get frustrated at uh, his failed attempts to make Miriam understand something. As Miriam and Paul deepen their friendship, we are told by Lawrence that uh, the kind of attraction and the kind of love that Miriam feels towards Paul is not only physical, but it is more to do with, uh, with, 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 uh, with the spiritual realm also. Uh, the, the kind of love that Miriam has for Paul is, to use uh, Lawrence's word, is religious. Uh, like you would love your God, right? And God can do no wrong, right? If you love your God, then you love your God the way that he is or she is, right? And Miriam loves Paul the way he is. Miriam sees no faults in Paul. Miriam, even if there are faults in Paul, then Miriam convinces herself that I must love Paul because it is my religion. He is my religion, right? So there was that religious intensity in the way Miriam would express, not actually express, but in the way Miriam would feel uh, affection towards Paul. 
Paul sometimes would think that Miriam is being too intense and, and he is not wrong because of course if someone comes to you and, and uh, tells you that they loved you with this kind of intensity then of course you would also feel intimidated. So sometimes Paul wants things to be, you know, very easy going but Miriam on the other hand would be very intense and very serious uh, and this would annoy Paul often. Uh, as Paul and Miriam's friendship begin to grow, begins to grow, then we see that uh, Mrs. Morel again, uh, she does not approve of Miriam because uh, she she just says that uh, she uh, she doesn't like her and that Miriam is not a good company for uh, Paul. Uh, perhaps Mrs. Morel sees in Miriam the same kind of intensity of love that he and that uh, Mrs. Morel herself feels for Paul. Uh, the same kind of intensity, the same kind of dedication, the same loyalty and perhaps that creates a kind of competition between the mother and this potential girlfriend, this potential lover. Uh, <clears throat> as we move forward in part two, we are introduced to many other characters also, among which are chiefly Clara and Baxter. Clara is, uh, is she is, uh, she is separated from her husband and she is one of uh, the uh, advocates of uh, suffering, uh, suffrage rights for women. She advocates that women should have voting rights and Clara and Paul have many arguments, very debate, many, many debates around this issue. Paul meets Clara through Miriam uh, and Miriam and Clara are friends and Paul is extremely attracted towards Clara. So just like Miriam is projected as this petite, as this meek and as this loyal uh, lover of Paul, there is something about Clara which Paul cannot figure out and that attracts him towards her. Uh, the reason, main reason for the attraction is that according to Paul, Paul views Clara as a sensuous woman. As, as a woman who, uh, who is able to, you know, uh, make him feel things. And on the other hand, Miriam, even though she loves Paul, and, and sometimes Paul also loves her, but with Miriam, Paul misses that flirtiness. Paul misses that easygoing uh, attitude. Paul misses that kind of passionate intensity towards each other, right? So Paul is infatuated with Clara. Of course, Clara has uh, her ex-husband also, Baxter. Baxter works as a manual laborer and uh, he is in many ways similar to Mr. Morel. Paul is also, despite his hatred towards Baxter, Paul is also attracted towards him because Baxter reminds him of, Ms. of his father. Paul and Baxter have a very uh, very complex kind of a relationship. They both initially do not like each other. Paul thinks that Baxter is very rude and very rough. Uh, Baxter thinks that Paul is, is very snooty, very snobbish and full of himself. Uh, Paul of course is an artist and he has begun to grow his name as an artist. He is able to sell his paintings at a very good price. He is able to take care of the family. He is able to take care of the mother. Paul and Mrs. Morel are very, very close to each other because after William's death, it was Paul who, uh, onto which Mrs. Morel projected all her love, right? Uh, and as the love started to decrease between Gertrude and Walter, the love that she had stored was transferred onto Paul. So, of course, Paul and Mrs. Morel are very close to each other and Paul tells uh, his mother pretty much everything. Often we realize while reading the text that behind every decision that Paul takes or makes, uh, there is this hanging shadow of Mrs. Morel, his mother, right? And that becomes a challenge for Paul uh, because of the presence of, her, uh, of his mother every time, all the time, whether he is to take a decision based on uh, his, his creative talents, whether he has to take a decision which is required in the field of any profession that he might choose, 
or whether it is taking a decision on whom to love and uh, whom to make friends uh, with. So behind all of these things, uh, we feel that and, and we are told by Lawrence that uh, Mrs. Morel is ever present. Mrs. Morel is always there. And this kind of influence Paul finds very tough to break from, break away from. It is one of the reasons that Paul never really falls in love or never really finds anything meaningful out of these two women in his life, either Miriam or Clara. Right? Uh, Miriam and Paul do consummate their love for each other. They do uh, <clears throat> try to get physical with each other. But after uh, the deed is done, uh, Paul goes back and kind of gets over Miriam. And pretty much Miriam is left very lonely. On the other hand, uh, Clara is always appealing uh, to Paul. The way she moves, the way she talks, the kind of confidence that she carries around herself makes her very attractive to Paul. There comes a point in the novel, in the second part of the novel, that uh, Paul, Miriam, Clara, they go to visit uh, one of the elderly ladies in, in, the, in, in, in their neighborhood. And there they chance upon this very nice horse. And Clara is fascinated by that horse. Of course, horse is male, right? And mare is the female. So Clara is very fascinated by the horse. And people who were present there, they start to speculate that perhaps Clara is missing her husband or perhaps Clara needs a man in her life. Baxter, who is Clara's ex-husband, uh, he and Paul, when they meet, uh, of course they don't like each other and there is an incident where they happen to engage in a brawl with each other, they happen to fight with each other. Uh, <clears throat> but later when Baxter suffers from an, uh, from an illness, uh, Paul does go to meet him and Baxter realizes that Paul is not really a bad person. And Paul also realizes that Baxter is not really a bad person. Baxter, even though he is living with a mistress, he still loves his wife. That's what he says. And Paul finds that perhaps his sufferings, Baxter's sufferings, are true. And Paul makes things happen in such a way that Clara and Baxter are able to reunite. Back home, there is, of course, Mrs. Morel, the mother. There is, of course, Annie also. Arthur, uh, he was never good at anything except for looking good, because that's what Mr. Morel was also like. Mr. Morel was also a dashing man, a very charming man. But while Mr. Morel was a minor and he did do something, uh, Arthur has turned out to be only a pretty face only a handsome man. Uh, whatever line people have tried to put him into, he does not really like that and he runs away. Finally, Arthur is made to join the army. He joins army and, and he joins army. He is not really made to join army. He joins army out on a whim. But when he is selected, uh, he is made to serve his duties. Uh, <coughs> At home, of course, Paul is struggling to get out of the shadows of Mrs. Morel while being very much loving towards her. Uh, Paul does not perhaps realize the gravity of influence that his mother is having over him. And by the time that he begins to realize that all of his actions and decisions are being influenced by the presence of his mother, by that time, the mother's condition also deteriorates. The mother is also old, she has also fallen sick, and she is in bed. Then comes a time when uh, the mother is really not doing well, Gertrude is really not doing well. And there comes a time when 
Paul has to euthanize her. Paul has to let her go. And Paul has to very quietly almost kill her. Right? And that action of overdosing your mother with the pills and that action of purposefully trying to end the life of your mother even though you are even when you are very much attached to her even when you are unable to get her out of your life or your mind or the way you think or the way you love people around you or the way you you go about your day to day life all has to do it and this act is a major symbolic act because this act makes Paul break free not only from the mother but also from Westwood and everything that had come from Westwood whether it is the father whether it is his siblings his brothers sisters all the kinds of troubles traumas happiness everything that he has shared he has got from this little mining town where the family used to live uh, he has finally managed to break free of it all right the novel ends on this very optimistic note that paul is ready to undertake a very important journey in his life he walks up to the top of the nearby hillock and from there he is able to see the shimmering lights of the city in the distance and in those shimmering lights of the city is the suggestion for hope that in future paul is going to be a very good artist and in future paul is going to be a very nice brilliant young man that's it thank you for listening thank you for tuning in i'll see you later